Hi, I'm Greg with Physics Group here with Reed Brewer at Goose Island Brewing Company. We're here at their barrel aging warehouse. Mm -hmm. Reed, thanks for having us. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Nice. So what are we drinking here? Sophie. It's our uh, Saison. We have it uh, partially aged in uh, wine barrels uh, with uh, some Brett Brooks and uh, some orange peels. Tell us how you got into brewing. I really just loved the craft beer industry, and um, I started homebrewing, of course, like 90% of other people, um, and uh, started working at um, a couple of brew pubs around the area, and uh, just fell in love with it, so decided to go to Siebel and uh, get a more formal education, so I met a lot of good people that I know hey, now, cheers. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and now I'm working at Goose Island, and uh, life's good, man. Awesome. So, yeah. Tell us a little bit about how Goose Island got started, some of the history there. Uh, Goose Island's been around since 1988, so I am a youngin before I was born. Um, I've never been more proud to work for a brewery that I grew up with my entire life. Uh, I mean, one of my first beers was Brew One Two, I guarantee it. It started in 1988 uh, by two guys, John Hall and Greg Hall, uh, father and son, and uh, they had a uh, a pub on um, Clybourne and uh, North Avenue on Goose Island. Uh, and they opened the production facility that's, uh, th that brew pub is still there, but the production facility is on uh, 1800 West Fulton. And it is, uh, is full on, we got a 50 barrel brew house um, and uh, we're brewing 24 seven. We got a tap room and, uh, and, and everything's great. We're starting to make, uh, kind of get gl more global and we, we're opening up brew pubs all over the all over the country and well, mostly international actually so that's kind of cool as well um, and everything's growing we're making new beers innovating and everything's cool man yeah yeah I sure got Chicago staple too yeah absolutely like that's what I mean like I grew up with them and now I'm working for them and that's it's great that's awesome so, yeah what would you say is Goose Island's approach to craft beer uh, we definitely um, like to do a lot of innovation we um, of course, we have this amazing barrel aging warehouse. We do the Bourbon County Stout. And we also do the uh, wine barrels for, um, for sours and stuff like that. Um, we have fooders, we have Solera projects, we have innovation projects where we're just adding random, uh, you know, who, who knows what into those barrels. Um, and we also do a, a full name wood project that is uh, with um, all of the different uh, branches of uh, Goose were able to all kind of get together. I think it's like six or eight people each. And we do a, uh, we, we all brew beer together um, just to not only uh, get to know one, each, one, one another, but to uh, just make random funky beers that we think are kind of cool and why not, you know? So uh, it's from any, anywhere from uh, like a pickled beer with, uh, with celery salt because celery salt's on the Chicago dog and <laughs> To you know, just a nice clean um, uh, cucumber pilsner. Yeah, cucumber pilsner, or, <laughs> or you know, um, we had this uh, great um, alt that is uh, coming out called 1516, and it is a, um, I believe it's a smoked uh, alt beer, um, but it is it's wonderful. It's a, kind of a testament to the Rhein Heights because it's 2016 now. And, 500 year anniversary. Exactly, it's a 500 year anniversary. And the approach to craft beer, to get back to the question, um, I would say we like to make uh, beers that are, are drinkable, that are clean and crisp, um, and uh, that kind of everybody can drink. Um, and they're, a lot of the time, uh, they, we have some that are, are beers that are, um, are kind of for the more advanced craft beer drinker, but we also have beer that um, anybody off the street can come and try and uh, they most likely will enjoy it so that's cool yeah, yeah. yeah. I've enjoyed them so far mm -hmm. yeah so, so do I what's the main difference you notice drinking a beer dispensed through the physics draft beer system versus a hand pour from a can or bottle the physics system it keeps foam uh, going a lot longer uh, the also the head is uh, creamier it's definitely a lot smaller bubble size, and it's kind of keeping the uh, it's kind of keeping the the carbonation more inside. So you have a little bit more um, you you add a little bit more body to it. 
um, if that makes sense at all. Um, but it's uh, it compa in comparison to a, uh, a normal beer that you would pour out of a bottle or a can, uh, you'll, you'll, you wouldn't get foam like this, and uh, it would tend to go flat more quickly. Um, so yeah, I definitely like it. I mean, it's 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 cool and it's uh, and it's it's useful, you know. So oh, awesome. cheers to that, man. Cheers. Yeah. One last question for you: If you could have a beer with anyone <laughs> living or dead, who would it be? Uh, so I plan to have a beer with everybody in my life, <laughs> everybody in the I world, like it. Ambitious. which would be really nice. But so I'll just go with somebody dead, and it, I don't know why, but it would be George Carlin. Uh, George Carlin's the man. I, I love him, and uh, I, I loved all of his uh, all of his skits and uh, the way he presented himself. And uh, and I just I could I could rack his brain forever and ever and ever. So I'd love to have a beer with that guy. He's maybe funny when dude. I, maybe when I die, you know that'd be cool. So well, great. Thanks for having yeah. us here today, man. Thanks for coming. Welcome back. Cheers.